Yo, Elliot, three months ago, I met this beautiful Russian girl when I was living in Indonesia. I since moved back to LA to take care of some of my business. We stayed together, but we're having problems with the distance. She's a very good woman, traditional values, extremely devoted to me. I feel as though if I wanted it, this is a good woman that I could marry and build a life with, but I'm having trouble committing fully. Obviously, she wants me to be back in Bali so that we can be together, and I would love to be with her too, but I can't see myself marrying her, at least not when I'm at this stage of my life, when I'm building my future. I'm 25, nowhere near my prime as a man, and if I go into this relationship, I feel like I would miss out on a lot of experiences. The other thing is, as effed up as it sounds, I don't see her fitting with my quote unquote brand I've built for myself. I met her on Tinder, so there's shame with that. <laughs> I can't see myself introducing her to clients, friends of mine, uh, them looking at her and having respect for me, which I never want to feel. I wanna show off my woman and have other guys feel intimidated by her beauty, okay? And I don't want to live with regret, feeling I could be with other women. I know there's two ways I can go about this, I could fully commit, build a life with her, and build my business with her by my side, or break things off because I don't see marriage, go back into monk mode, double down on my business, and then add a woman into my life afterwards. Maybe I'm being too picky, and if I love, if love is there between us, which I believe there is, then there's no reason to end it. Maybe I should never have courted her in the first place if she didn't fit marriage standards, question mark. I'm hesitant to make a decision, she feels my hesitancies and deserves an answer. You help me during every season of being a man. Appreciate you always, E. So there are a bunch of red flags here, but the very first one that stuck out to me is that she, this is a long-distance relationship. And in all practic practical terms, a long-distance relationship is an imaginary relationship. It does not actually z exist. To be in relation with a woman is to be physically bonded with her. That's what, that's, that's how... A marriage is consummated, but it is the driving force of our union. And if we are separated, then everything is existential. It's imaginary. It's in our brain. And a couple of things. Now, one of the red flags is, and I don't know if this is true. You can comment down below, but I assumed that you were fornicating, having sex with her. And that's a part of the reason why you've fallen into love with her. And so when that happens, we get caught in our feels as a man and as a woman, it happens to both. Uh, there's, this, there's this false idea, maybe it was once true, but there's this idea that only women get attached when women, you know, you gotta, women need to protect themselves because as they open themselves up, they become more vulnerable. They become vulnerable to attachment to a man, they say this. But it's not been my experience. Uh, especially not with dealing with the young men that I mentor to. I see you guys getting attached to girls that you have sex with. <laughs> the attachment is different though. And here's a double flag for you. Number one, you're living in an imaginary world because she's imaginary. She's not actually here. There's nothing really going on. But number two, your imagination is running wild because you have emotional baggage due to blowing your load with her, orgasming with a, with a woman. You, the, what we think is love is a, is, a, is a form of lust. You think you love her, but what's running in your mind is those good feelings that you had. So let me, let, me, let me boil it down to this. Three aspects of being, thinking, feeling, and doing. You're thinking about her, and so that's imaginary. That's ephemeral. That doesn't exist. It's in your brain. Feeling is, again intangible in a way it's feeling is real but not always true and so you're you're in this thought space and you're in this feeling place but you're not in this real place with her which is the nitty-gritty action we're talking about the warrior aspect right you have to all four of you have to be there that warrior needs to be there and that means leading her protecting her teaching her showing her and mainly creating a context a container, a frame for the relationship that you would hope to build with her. Doing this over the telephone or Snapchat or however it is that you're communicating with her is false. It doesn't exist. It's imaginary. 
and it's and once again it's wrapped up in in feelings that are associated with your sin right that you've fallen into sin with her and when thomas aquinas says that sin darkens the intellect what does that mean what does it mean that sin darkens the intellect it means that when we sin we begin to then um rationalize that sin and then it becomes an idol it becomes a god and we can't we start to we start to tell ourselves why it's good why it's right and why i should proceed with it and so right now you're sinning with this girl because you didn't tell me you're not so i'm assuming that you did and so your intellect is darkened yeah your intellect is darkened your emotions are wrapped up your intellect is darkened and you're f and it's a false relationship in every aspect every way shape or form this is not, you're not going in the right direction with her. Does that, does that mean I'm telling you that there could be nothing with her? No, I'm not saying that at all. By the grace of God, things come about the way they're supposed to unfold. I was sinning from head to toe with my wife before we got married. I didn't know I was a kid, right? Uh, we, have a, we have a model marriage, I'd like to say. Which brings up another point here too. In terms of, so there are a couple of things. I understand your guilt and shame associated with meeting her on Tinder. We got to go back to your intentions when it comes to women. And I'm not asking you to give me an answer, but there's just food for thought. What were your intentions when you were swiping through Tinder? It was probably to get laid. If you want to fish for salmon, you got to go to the Northeast and swim and, and fish in the stream. This is the fish I'm looking for. I'm going to the right place and using the right means to catch a salmon. There's a certain kind of fish I want. If you go dip in your fishing pole in a dirty pond and you pull out a fish, well, maybe you could eat that fish. Maybe that fish is good. There's good chance that because it's a dirty pond that fish got a bunch of dirty stuff in it and not only that in them dirty ass ponds one of the things that people who like to fish do is they catch a fish and they throw it back so i don't know how many other guys were chewing on this piece of fish <laughs> right this is if the, if a woman puts herself in tinder she's putting herself in a dirty pond i don't know how else to say it and i'm not you know i'm not in the dating space like you guys so i know a lot of people say oh elliot you you can't say oh i can say I can say even better than you guys. You know why? Objectivity. I'm not in it. I'm on, I'm on the outside looking in. When you're in, it's hard to see. I'm on the outside. So anybody who argues with me about relationships, well, first of all, I have a track record for marriage, right? And that's what relationship ultimately really boils down to. But I can see things y'all can't see because <laughs> I'm on the outside looking in like, eh, that don't look so good, bro. And like I said, sin darkens the intellect. So when you have somebody on the outside shining a light, like what's going on in there? You, if, you're, if you're available to it, you can see things that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. There's that, and I could understand why that wouldn't fit with your brand, right? You don't wanna go telling your, your family and friends that you met this girl swiping on a hookup app. I'm sure there are some, you say she's, got, she's a good woman, traditional values, she seems devoted. I think those are all those are all wonderful things. She met and you say, this is a good woman I could marry and build a life with. Okay, well, maybe that maybe that's true, maybe it's not. You know, you gotta discern that as well, right? Or is it that you're just, you know, your 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 intellect is darkened. Introducing her to a friend, so on and so forth. You want your friends to be intimidated by her beauty. So you talk about that and you talk about brand for yourself. I get it. I understand. She's an accessory. In a way, a woman is an accessory. That's why they call them trophy wives, right? She's an accessory to your life. And you want, I guess, I don't know, you want other men to look at her like they would your Bugatti, right? Like, ooh, that's nice. I want that. I don't know. I don't know. I understand that. I totally understand that. Um, but I, I have a whole rabbit hole that I could go down in terms of that as well. But I won't. So your ultimate question basically is, should I break up with a girl if I can't see marriage with her or go on with her, develop a relationship and see where it goes? Well, you, in terms of developing a relationship with her, say something about moving to Bali to go be with her. And that, that, is, that is a bad move. That is a move from a place of weakness. You don't, 
This is one thing my father used to say. My dad is so red pilled, but he didn't. He did, the term didn't exist. And when I was a kid, my dad used to say stuff like this to me, and I was like, I didn't understand until like I grew up and I realized, oh damn, my dad was right. He said, don't ever, 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 ever go move to a woman. Don't go move to her. Don't go move in with her. She comes to you. You don't go to her. Remember I talked about men being sons and that we're sons of God? Women are likened unto the earth, right? Because the, the, the love of the sun is poured into earth, which produces life. The sun don't move. The earth revolves around the sun. The moon revolves around the sun. You ever hear... You know, I just different modes of thinking and stuff. I used to listen to like Wu-Tang Clan. I think some of those guys were like Nation of Islam guys. And I think I remember listening to uh, uh, Method Man called Mary J. Blige in that one song about, you know, their love life. I don't know. It was, it was an old song. I'm dating myself. It was like 1998. <laughs> he called her his earth. He's like, you are my moon or my earth, something like that. You are my earth. I'm the sun. You are my earth. But that, that is, that's poetic, but that's legitimate based on our nature. You don't go move to a, the earth, the, the sun don't come down to the earth. It don't revolve around the earth. We discovered that. Science shows that. And, and spiritually, that makes sense. You don't go move to a woman. If, she, if this is something to be, well, then she, then she comes to you. And if you're really considering her for marriage, which I don't think you are, so I think this is just kind of speculation, I'm just ranting right now. If you're considering her for marriage, then you, then you by right and justice need to speak to her parents, particularly her father. You need to, if you call this girl, this is another crazy effed up thing about our society. These guys want traditional girls, right? I hear you write that, traditional values. I want a traditional wife. But y'all don't uh, approach, appropriate or uh, approach the courtship in a traditional way. And, and, the, and the one biggest, this is the biggest attack on patriarchy and the biggest attack on culture, the biggest attack on traditional tradition. And, and hear me out when you say this, because I can imagine that every one of you will become a father someday. So you need to understand this in terms of your authority and your responsibility and what you should expect from other men when you have daughters. If this girl is going to move from her country, you had better assure to her father that you are planning to take good care of her. Because in essence, you're marrying her. If she comes and moves with you, do you she... You're doing her a disservice by letting her come to you so you could try her out. Imagine going to this girl's father. Maybe she's real traditional. And you go to her father and say, hey, look, uh, and this, I, I, this, I'm going to say this in a way that sounds crazy, but this is the way we, this is 90% of what people do. But let's say you're actually going to go to her father. Because most, most men don't go to, go to the fathers. We don't, we don't respect fathers at all. The, the respect of the father will not ascend, will not be produced until we respect the, the father, our fathers, and the fathers of the women that we want to make our wives. Even if he's a slap dick, it's by the, the respect is by office, not by the person, if you understand what I'm saying. It's the office that he old, who holds. He's the essence of this woman. So anyway, you imagine if you go to him and you say, hey, uh, I want to, <laughs> hey, I already got a, I already got a taste of your daughter. She tastes pretty good. I like her flavor. Um, why don't I just take her for a little while and just, you know, feast on her a little bit more? I'm just going to feast on her a little bit more to see if this is, uh, <laughs> is going to work out. And as a father, you should be thinking that way, too, because if one of my daughters or some man come to my daughter and come to me with this kind of conversation, I'd be like, hell no. You know why? Because a woman is never her own head. I know this sounds crazy, the world don't like to hear this, but she is under the authority of her father until she's under the authority of her husband. That's why women are given in marriage. That's why her face is covered with a veil when she comes to the altar. The father's basically saying, you, you, don't have, you, you haven't contracted conjugal rights 
with my daughter yet until I lift this up and then I present her to you. Well, you already boning this chick. So if, you, if tradition is what you want, then you got to start understanding tradition and behaving in a traditional way. So anyway, for all intents and purposes, I think you're wasting your time. And I think you're wasting her time. And for the salvation of both your souls, I would say cut it off. Maybe, you know, and I would be very explicit with her. I wouldn't ghost her or I wouldn't... Um, see that's very effeminate and see how it unfolds and kind of try to keep her in your back pocket i would say that you just tell her straight up this is i i like you a lot there's a lot of potential here but i don't see things working out under these conditions maybe in the future maybe under different conditions maybe it'll work out i don't know if she's still hanging out on tinder i'd probably say throw the fish back into the pond and like you said, you're a young man, you're 25, you got plenty of time, right? For a woman 25, her clock is ticking. She's got like two more years before she starts hitting the wall, right? And then, she, then the makeup gets kicked on a little bit thicker. But you, look, I'm, I dare to say I'm probably at my best looking. Nah, I was probably my best looking at 34. I'm, good, I'm getting some wisdom though. Got a different look. When I was 33, 34, that was my, I was, I was my, at my peak. And I'm not saying it's based on some mathematical formula or some book I read. I look back and I'm like, damn, that's a sexy dude. You're not even there yet. 25, you're still, you're still a boy, to be completely honest. But you're ambitious, you have high standards, and you're creating something in your life. Keep going with it. Don't let these women be a distraction to you. And if you are prayerful, and if you're in a state of grace, and if you have true intention of a traditional wife and marriage and life then god will bring that into your into your life at the right time and so that's all i got to say about that dude done